Have you ever had to wait for your medication because the insurance company required a PA or a prior authorization? By the end of this video, you will understand the PA process that the pharmacist and the physician has to go through. By subscribing to my channel and hitting that little bell, you'll be notified every Monday when I post a new video that is designed to help you navigate the sometimes confusing healthcare system. Hello, I'm Dr. Snow. And as a pharmacist for more than 30 years, I've had to tell hundreds of patients that their insurance will not pay for their medication until their physician gets a prior authorization. PAs are frustrating to everyone, the pharmacist, the physician, and especially the patient. PAs seem to waste everyone's time and delay treatment of the patient anywhere from hours to weeks. Prior authorizations are designed to help save the healthcare system money and to keep the patient safe. But sometimes it seems like it's just another way for the insurance company to get out of paying for service that you, the patient, has paid for with your premiums. There are various reasons that the insurance company requires a PA before they'll pay for your meds. Every insurance company has a formulary or a list of preferred medications that they cover. If your physician gives you a prescription for a medication that is not on their formulary, the insurance company will probably ask the physician to change the medication to something that they prefer or go through the process of explaining why his choice is necessary over their preferred med. Another reason that the insurance company may require a PA is the medication is extremely expensive and they'd like you to try a less expensive medication first. This is called step care. You start with a less expensive medication and if that doesn't work after a set of period of time, then the insurance company will authorize the more expensive med. First, you have to fail on the cheaper med. And just because a medication is cheaper, doesn't mean that it's less effective. So step care can be a very good thing, both for you and for the healthcare system in general. Some medications are just not covered and your physician will not be able to get you a prior authorization. Drug classes that are generally not covered for any reason under insurance include over-the-counter medications, weight loss or weight gain medications, medications to help you get pregnant, brand name medications when a generic is available, vitamins and other supplements except for prenatal vitamins when you are pregnant, drugs for sexual dysfunction such as Viagra or Cialis, medications that have been shown to be safe but haven't been proved to be effective, and anything that's used for cosmetic reasons such as nail fungus, hair regrowth, or wrinkle cream. Also, Medicare Part D won't pay for cough medications. I guess old people just aren't supposed to cough. If this video is giving you value, please press that like button. So how does the PA process work? Your physician gives you a prescription. You take the prescription to the pharmacy. Your pharmacist runs your prescription through the insurance. The insurance denies the prescription and sends back the message, prior authorization required. The pharmacist then sends the PA request to the physician. The physician's office starts the PA process by determining, first, is there another medication that the f insurance does prefer that would work just as well for you? If so, the physician will write a new prescription, send it to your pharmacy, and you'll get your med medication. If not, the physician staff starts filling out the paperwork explaining why you need the medication that he is prescribing. The insurance company will then review the prior authorization request and decide whether or not they're going to authorize payment for the medication. This process usually takes one to three days. It can be quicker, but it can be much slower. I've seen it take up to three weeks. One thing that you can possibly do to avoid the prior authorization process is to call your insurance company and request a copy of their formulary. Take this formulary list to your physician's appointments 
and he can go through the formulary and determine which medication your insurance likes that he thinks would be appropriate to treat your condition. Keep in mind that you, the patient, always has the option to pay out of pocket for the medication, even if the insurance continues to deny coverage. The pharmacist will always fill a valid prescription, but they cannot make your insurance company pay for it. So it is up to you, the patient, to decide whether or not the medication is worth the cost if the insurance company won't cover it. While the PA process is annoying to everyone, it does save money for unnecessary but expensive medications. If the insurance company paid for everything that every physician ever wrote for, the cost of health care would go through the roof. I have written an ebook that helps parents and children address subjects that may be difficult to bring up but are necessary to plan for the future. You will find the link to get this free resource in the description below. I am sure it will help start conversations that are so important. If this video helped you understand the prior authorization process, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Have you ever been frustrated by your insurance company requiring a PA for your medication? Comment below if your physician had to change the medication. I hope this video helps you understand that your pharmacist and your physician are working together to get you the medications that you need in a timely manner and at a reasonable cost. Thank you for joining me today. Have a blessed week.